All right, today we're diving into a new pitch deck. This time we're talking about Coinbase, the largest cryptocurrency exchange here in the United States and one of the biggest public companies in the crypto blockchain industry, if not the biggest that's focused on this stuff. Did you know that they were actually accepted into Y Combinator back in 2012 and they raised $600,000 from initialized capital using the deck we're about to break down here. So if you're a tech company, you're in the crypto industry. You want to see what they were thinking about back in 2012 and what got them all the success at Y Combinator. Let's dive into it today. But before we get into that, links in the description, both to the deck as well as the opportunity to book a call with me. Let's get on a call. Let's talk about business strategy and try to figure out how to work together. Or if you want your pitch deck or you want your company to be live featured on my channel, let's find some ways to work together. So let's dive right into the deck here and see what we got. All right, so here's our deck for Coinbase. As we said, this was pitched at the demo day of Y Combinator, which is the largest accelerator for tech companies. We talked about how some of the other businesses we've reviewed in the past have gotten into different accelerators like this. This was Coinbase's attempt to get into Y Combinator. And so first off, you notice the logo is different and you notice that their only focus was on Bitcoin at the time. Now they've got a ton of different listed cryptocurrencies, some of which are getting them in hot water with regulators today. At the time, they were only focused on Bitcoin. They also really have a software focus right here off the rip. And I actually think that this is really cool. They use their initial slide in the deck to show off the product that they've already built. And I think that as we've seen in previous decks and as I talk to founders a lot, they have a starting slide about their company with the logo and then they got an ending slide with a thank you. Both of those slides really do nothing for the actual pitch. And those are the two slides that probably are going to get the most airplay. As you can see right now, we're sitting here on this first slide as I intro things. If you were pitching the deck, you would be sitting here on this first slide talking about the beginning and, and getting everything warmed up. You may already have this shared before you dive into the pitch. So having the actual tech product that you've built live on the screen right away, I think is a very, very smart way of maximizing the real estate for an investor. Any venture capital investor, any investor is only going to look at your slides for, you know, five to 10 seconds per slide. This is the best way to at least show them the product that you're building and capture their attention early. So because this is a new technology at the time, 2012, and even today, a lot of people don't know very much about cryptocurrency. They obviously needed to spend a slide walking people through what Bitcoin even is to justify why their solution is needed. So they talk here a little bit about Bitcoin. What I like about this slide is that it's simple. Let your own words do the talking. Don't overpack the slide with a ton of words, a ton of writing, a ton of breakdowns, show that you understand these things without needing to review or go back to your slide deck to back it up. Maybe you want to have an information deck, an educational deck, something like that that you use for presentations at universities, or maybe you have it for diligence for additional investors if they want to learn more, but a pitch deck needs to be simple and clear to the point. Otherwise, you're going to lose your investors. I guarantee you most of them are not going to read really long slide decks, at least for U.S. focused investors. It's very different in the southeastern Asia areas and the APAC region and other places. They prefer more of those higher density decks. But when you're talking about U.S. based venture capital, which is the primary source of venture capital in the world, even today, it's mostly sweet and easy until you really start to build that relationship. They want you to pitch it yourself. This slide is just, I think, further pushing that narrative. They're trying to show it's a global opportunity. So this is almost a total addressable market slide as well, showing that there's a global phenomenon happening here and a global opportunity to capitalize on that for themselves. And they were suggesting there's nobody in the market that does that properly today. Again, they show the value of Bitcoin because of the fact that this is really important for the need for their company. They need to prove why Bitcoin is getting traction, getting adoption. So if Bitcoin is gaining adoption and there's no proper uses or no, no proper wallets or good user experience, that's where they slide in. First, they talk about their early adopters. This is their target audience. This is who they're trying to hit. International people trying to pay for things, virtual goods, 
peer-to-peer -peer transactions. Microtransactions is interesting, one that we haven't quite seen as much. Remittances, definitely in e-commerce, seem to be some of the most compelling narratives here. But as you can see with the size of this word chart, peer-to-peer -peer being the biggest one, developing world being another large one there. So they're really trying to focus on that global audience and underserved markets from a transactional economy perspective. The problem with Bitcoin is it's too difficult to use. I remember back in these days having to use all kinds of programs and having sketchy sources to access cryptocurrency. Coinbase makes it easy. It's a ease of use platform and solution for an existing problem and an existing architecture. That's what they were trying to build. This is walking through what their exact solution is, which is a hosted wallet. They're walking through, this is the tech product that we've built and we're looking to scale that operation. As you can see, they're in beta. So they were presumably trying to get out of beta, which is why they were raising capital. This is a really interesting slide and there's not a lot of words here, right? There's no title at the top. There's no nothing walking you through this slide. And sometimes having slides like this in a deck can be really powerful because it's guaranteed to grab the attention of an investor. Most investors literally watch this. They, they flick through the slides just like this when they're trying to rate, when they're trying to see their decks. Why? Because an investor is going to check out a hundred decks a week and they really want to see something that catches their eye. That really causes them to dive in a slide like this. will do that because you see all this white space. You see just one thing that they're trying to push through here. I think that is actually a very powerful slide. It was probably even more powerful in person as you're pitching this analogy, but Look, they're comparing themselves to Apple and one of the most successful products of all time, which is iTunes. And iTunes, what that meant to MP3 is what Coinbase wanted to be for Bitcoin. This is such a powerful narrative. This slide alone, I think, helped everyone understand exactly where Coinbase was trying to position themselves. And this is a seed round deck. They don't have traction. They probably didn't have a lot of revenue, but they understood exactly the market that they wanted to penetrate. And they wanted to be synonymous with this underlying asset by improving the experience. And that's why I think that the iTunes analogy is perfect, right? Buying individual songs, managing CDs, having all this stuff, really inconvenient iTunes, didn't reinvent MP3s, it didn't reinvent music, it just recreated and reinvented the process with which we consume that music and, and share and experience that industry. Coinbase is trying to do the same thing. It's not inventing Bitcoin. It's just creating a platform and a, a means of exchange for the asset class. I think this is an awesome, awesome slide and one that you don't see every day in a lot of different decks because founders are so focused on trying to pound as much information in as possible. Sometimes simplicity helps you stand out. It also helps your pitch because, hey, let's just go with the flow and speak from the heart, talk about what we're really passionate about as opposed to reading off a slide deck. This is a great slide because this is the traction slide. That's right. You probably got that one or hopefully you did. Traction is really important, especially for a company that doesn't have revenues, doesn't have any of the actual business growth that you're going to use to traditionally value a company. At least showing that people are adopting your platform is a great way to validate the solution that you've built. It's pretty easy to build a small tech little solution. So spin up a bunch of them, see which ones hit. This is a classic hockey stick growth chart. That's what we would call a chart that goes up and to the right, as you can see here on their daily signups. They're being able to say, look, every day people are coming at 20% growth rates. We need to raise money right now to facilitate and capture that user base and monetize them properly. That's what we're trying to do here at Coinbase. Then we've got the transaction slide. This is pretty simple, right? They're talking about what they're servicing for those clients. How are they monetizing that user base? Well, they're buying Bitcoin on Coinbase's exchange. So they're walking through what those users are actually doing, especially in today's market. This was 10 plus years ago. Having users is not enough anymore because users are fickle. And unless you can figure out how to monetize them, you're going to struggle. Look at TikTok, right? You could get millions of views on a TikTok and struggle to monetize that whatsoever. It's not enough to just have users. You need to show what your plan is to monetize those users. How are you engaging those users? What are they doing on your platform that is relevant and useful that you can then begin to capture and defend? It's not enough to have them come to your site. You need them to use your site. And if they use your site, let's look at what they're using it for and then try to build a business around that.
that specifically. So it's kind of one extra step. It's not just about the users and the daily signups. It's about what are they doing? They're transacting in Bitcoin. This is a proven demand. The demand follows the user growth, which is good. It shows that the users are continuing to use that. And then they summarize. They're a new payment network based on Bitcoin. And that's it. That's their deck. And they spent this slide here walking through what was going on and explaining, I guess, the rest of the terms of the deal. This was a Y Combinator deck, so they didn't have an, an actual investment slide. A lot of times you might see an investment slide. What are you trying to raise? What are you looking to build? This was more of a, a actually just a pitch deck of, of the company for a live demo. And I think this is good. It's a new payment network. It's built on Bitcoin. Simple, easy. I think they did a good job taking a really complex topic and making it easy to understand. That is so crucial in a good pitch deck. Understand your market, understand where you fit in and understand how to communicate that well to the world. And you're going to raise a ton of money. They ended up raising 600,000 from initialized capital, went on to raise over $400 million. Now they're a public company that's a multi-billion dollar company and they've done it very successfully. So that's the Coinbase pitch deck. If you've got a company that you want me to, to review next, Put it in the description below. Schedule a call with me. Let's talk about some business strategy. Figure out ways to work together. And I'll talk to you next time.